Paranormal in Pennsylvania may discuss topics such as suicide, murder, and other potentially upsetting things. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to Paranormal in Pennsylvania, where we discuss history and hauntings. Today's story takes us back to Gettysburg for the third time. I'm Sarah. And I'm Erica. Let's get into it. Okay, so Jenny Wade. Yes. Devil's Den. Mm-hmm. And now Little Round Top. And I'm honestly surprised that Big and Little Round Top weren't the first ones we covered. Actually, yeah. Because they're like the big two of the battle. Right. right. I feel like everybody goes to see them when they go there. Yes. I had not even heard of Jenny Wade. No offense to Jenny Wade. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting to hear about her life, but I hadn't heard of her. So when I was thinking of additional places i was like you know we've both been to gettysburg a few yes. times i've been a few times at least so let's look there and obviously the round tops come up easily right and if you are interested in a previous episode on jenny wade or devil's den we'll if you're on youtube we'll try to put the cards around us and if not you can find us on youtube spotify apple podcast wherever you're listening to this you will find those episodes so the history unsurprisingly Little Round Top is adjacent to Big Round Top. No way. (laughs) Who would have guessed? So it's a rocky outcropping near Gettysburg. It's not actually in Gettysburg City proper. Okay. Because it's out. It's a battlefield. Yes. And it was the site of a battle between Confederate and Union armies on July 2nd, 1863. Something so interesting and is I feel like so many things that we talk about are right around July 4th. I think General Wayne Anthony was born on July 5th, if I remember correctly, and I feel like it's always right around July. And I thought that was strange. I guess with birthdays it is. But with the battles, it makes a lot of sense that it would be July, September, because September comes up a lot too, because they don't want to fight in winter oh, if they don't have to. Oh, yeah, I'm that's sure. a fair point. I mean, I was not there, obviously, <laughs> in 1863. So it was... Little Round Top was defended by Colonel Vincent, who actually died five days after the battle of injuries sustained during. And during the battle, there was back and forth until Chamberlain, who was another colonel, ordered the men to switch to bayonets. And that's where it became a very, very bloody battle. The Confederates eventually retreated, and years later, Chamberlain received a Medal of Honor for his conduct that day. (laughs) <laughs> you just look in shock. I don't know. I mean, I guess that does make sense. Yeah. I And I guess I should give the stats, too. 130 Union troops were killed and 280 Confederate troops. And so it's obviously part of the bigger battles around Gettysburg. Yes. But this itself, over double the amount of Confederate troops were killed. Yeah, I think it's hard to hear about. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. Medals are awarded. <laughs> That's like a thing. Right. But it's, sometimes it's hard to hear about the numbers because you just think about all those people that right that passed. 410 people in one day. Yeah. Gone. It's insane. And I also think the bayonet part really always gets to me. I think of the Paoli massacre as well. Yes. And it's like, geez, just imagine, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Right. You know, people are pointing bayonets at you and it's so long with the rifle and everything. Or musket. I don't know. I'm sure someone's going to comment and say, they didn't use rifles. So, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Everybody yes. knows what I mean. Yes. The bayonet attached to the gun, is yes. what I should say. Um, that, yeah, it's terrifying to think right. about. Right. And of course, as we always say, a place with so much disaster and despair lends itself to hauntings. And there yes. are a ton here. Very, very interesting ones, too. So... The haunts actually date back to the battle itself. Okay. So imagine, it's July 2nd, 1863, and there's a first-hand account written in a journal that states, the 20th Main Division were marching towards the Pennsylvania hamlet when they struck a fork in the road and found themselves unsure which direction to proceed. Luckily for them, a mounted rider appeared, albeit in somewhat unusual and old-fashioned uniform, who directed them in the right direction and even brought them up to the top of Little Round Top itself. When he disappeared without a word, many were convinced he was not of this earth. I literally have chills reading it. Like, someone wrote that. That's so crazy. I know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, like, for them 
to have stated that not only were they just at the fork in the road, but took the troops up to yes. the, the scene. Right. And oh. I, so what I was thinking is, okay, they say old fashioned uniform. What could they be wearing that wouldn't raise suspicion you know, because yes. I feel like if you saw anybody not in uniforms that you had, although I understand the meaning of a uniform is to all be the same, but I'm sure at this point in the war, there was kind of a hodgepodge of uniforms. So maybe they right. thought like, oh, it's just an old uniform someone had or something yeah. like that. That No, that is interesting. And it's also kind of, I, I think my brain was just like, aren't they wearing the old uniforms? You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> You're like, bro, you're in a Civil War uniform. Right. Uh, already old. <laughs> yeah. What? How much older could we go? But right. yeah, there must have been different versions. Which yeah. is like an interesting thing. I did not know that. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking Revolutionary War. Oh, yeah. That did happen, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like 100 years prior, 90 yes. years prior. <laughs> yeah. So there's another rumor about the day of the battle. So two hauntings saying that the spirit of George Washington himself appeared to the soldiers not once, but twice. Oh. Once to give them directions. So it somewhat conflicts the above story. Was it a soldier? Was it George Washington? Did it happen twice? Right. Who knows? But again, once actually during the battle to like cheer them on. So it could be that like, you know, because armies are huge. Maybe people from the back thought that it was George Washington. Oh, and, that's a great idea. You know what I mean? Like, so that the person who wrote the story may have been closer to the front. They mm -hmm. also may have been closer to the back and it was George Washington. That's true. It's a good point. So it could be that like just positioning, but I don't know. That's kind of, that's kind of nice to think of him like coming back. I know. And you know, okay. I think George Washington is an easy name to pick. Like they're like, Oh my gosh, we're really doing what's right. George Washington is supporting us. And that's not to say he didn't, but the division commander even testified to this. And I can't imagine, like, within the army, a division commander saying, yeah, I saw the ghost of George Washington, like, deadpan, so serious. So, to me, that means he really thought that, or else he wouldn't have said it. Yeah. Because he's going to be judged for it. Right. So, I think that's really cool. Yeah, that is. That's so interesting. So, those were the two during the battle. So, jump forward. And, as typical with battlefields, one of the hauntings is full-bodied apparitions that people think are reenactors. <laughs> Always. happens everywhere yes yes specifically there's one old man seems stumbling out of the tree line that smells of sulfur and people note this and sulfur smells like eggs yes. so it's a distinct smell and what's interesting is i guess maybe not many people know this i didn't sulfur was used for gunpowder during the civil war oh i did actually know that where did, how did you know that that's cool at some point in history class that's cool i knew that yeah i mean i I just think it's such a not common fact that it would be a weird thing for people to make up, you know? Yes. Like, oh, yeah. I guess you could, but even you, not that you make up stories about <laughs> ghosts, but being like, and he smelled of sulfur would be such a strange addition yes. to talking about a haunting. So, well, And it's, I mean, I don't, I don't know about anybody else. I don't want to smell sulfur. <laughs> like, I don't really, would, that would not be the first thing to come. Like, I would be like, and he smelled like roses, if right. I was going to lie. And he was know? so handsome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's really interesting. And it gets even crazier. So fellow reenactors actually took musket balls from him, thinking he was part of, you know, the reenactment. I know. They physically, physically took, took musket balls. It gets better. So they then realized he was not part of the group and they thought, what are these? So they handed them in and they were taken to a specialist who confirmed that they were genuine musket balls from the Civil War era. Okay. All right. I know. That's, I think that might be my favorite haunting we've ever discussed. Yes, I it agree. It is so incredible because, and I, I know people have different opinions about matter and spirit's ability to produce something, but this is so crazy that they literally date back you can carbon date well i don't know if you can carbon date because it's metal anyways they were said to be genuine i don't know how but they were said to be genuine by yeah. a specialist which you know they have no reason to lie right if something's coming into their possession they're not just going to be like yeah right it's from the 1800s that's really crazy i 
I wonder if the spirit had been carrying them around or if the spirit had been like wandering and they were maybe like buried somewhere or something Uh, and like had found them and brought them mm -hmm. to the people or is it just so not in a loop but so entrenched in the day mentally that it's like of course i have this in my bag you know oh yeah that's also true so it's really interesting to me and in fact i think the specialist had more reason to not say they were authentic because you kind of look to some people like you are weird for yes. believing that a ghost handed this. But I thought that that was really, really cool. Yeah, that is really, that's honestly the most interesting fact. I think Right. genuinely I agree with you. That's got to be my favorite. Right. It's just so undeniable. Yeah. You know, unless that whole group of reenactors is lying too. That's the other thing. I always think in accounts, there's strength in numbers. And the fact that this was multiple people... Because also, where else are they getting authentic Civil War musket balls? How much do those cost online? Probably a lot. I don't know. So I'm saying it would be such a task to fake this happening. Yeah, because they're not going to find them on the ground. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So really cool, I think. Indulge in the past with History on the Rocks, the podcast that brings you the fascinating tales of lesser known history while you get ready for the weekend with your favorite drink in hand. Join Cody and Audrey as they uncork the stories that time forgot, from famous people like George Washington and his distillery to pirate queens causing mayhem on the high seas. Each episode is a journey through the ages with endless possibilities. Give them a follow on Facebook and Instagram to keep up with news about the latest episodes. So grab a glass, relax, and join them every Thursday. History on the Rocks, where you'll learn about the past while sipping in the present. Subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts. The 1993 film Gettysburg, which I have literally never heard of, featured thousands of reenactors and was actually filmed on site here. During the film, the actors heard rustling in the trees and allegedly saw a spirit, potentially the same one, saying, rough one today, eh, boys? Oh. I know. (laughs) He probably was like, I found the people that I'm supposed to be with. Yeah. With the reenactors. He's like, ah, rough one today. And it's like... Yeah, it was for you. I know. <laughs> I know. Also, have you heard of that film, Gettysburg? I am I was about to say, I think I've seen it. I think my dad showed it to me because he was like super big into like war mm-hmm. movies and things like that. I'm pretty sure I've seen it, but I don't remember anything. It was like yeah. when I was younger. You yeah. I had never even heard of it. I We should watch it. I, we like history. That's part of why we do this. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I think it's really cool because here we have really tangible interactions with the musket balls with the hearing this while you're seeing it and it's happening to a group of people yes in both cases so again i always think that that adds a lot of credit to it yes so those are the specific hauntings the george washington the other directional ghost and then this guy with the musket balls but there's also general hauntings as is very common with 410 people that passed away here right People see orbs, they hear screams and footsteps, and they say that they constantly smell gunpowder. And what's interesting to me is, does that differ than the sulfur? I was just about to ask that. I don't know. I mean, mm, I don't know. Maybe like gunpowder is, smells different when it first goes off, and then the lingering smell is the sulfur? Or maybe it smells different after it goes off and the smell before is the sulfur oh that could that could make sense too Hmm. i mean if anybody knows yeah let us know i'm sure there's someone out there we did joke in a previous episode that matt hannah of horror hour with the hannahs is an arms expert so matt let us know i'll put in another (laughs) pew pew (laughs) (laughs) so visitors also report tugging on their clothes or hair when no one is around them happens a lot of places with hauntings yes and they also report taps on their shoulder while alone not anything significant there i mean when you're talking about people handing you musket balls and then you're talking about getting your hair pulled it's like right. one is much cooler <laughs> yes not not that the spirits doing this aren't great right but right <laughs> And then we get into some first-hand accounts that I found, and these are always really interesting to me. Yes. So one first-hand account said that a parent and son were leaving Little Round Top at dusk in their car, which I didn't know you could drive that close to there. I don't remember that you could, but... 
that's what the account says. Yeah. And they heard shouting that seemed to come from the top of the hill. So they quickly turned around and went back to see who was yelling, thinking someone was injured or something was wrong. But they looked for like a half hour and they could find no one there. And it was right at sunset. So the park was closing. Theoretically, there shouldn't have been anyone there. And they said they had an eerie feeling the whole time. Yeah. And, you know, battlefields are wide open. Yeah. They're not, you know, they're not. It's not like someone could hide behind a tree or rocks. I mean, you know, other than places right. like Devil's Den, but like, really, they're mostly just wide open. So if you hear someone and sprint back to where they are, mm-hmm. you should at least have like a glimpse of somebody running <laughs> in right. one direction or another. Right. Especially if someone screamed. I mean, unless it was like a prank and they screamed and ran away. But like you're saying, where did they run? Right. It really is the middle of a field. Yes. So I thought that was interesting too. That one is. And again, two people are authenticating that. So, yeah. Another account is, quote, we thought, what we thought was a reenactor climbed up the hill and sat next to him on the rock and said, hot, isn't it? End quote. Oh, nope. Sorry. That's ending the spirit talking. Uh, It was fall, and my husband was wearing a jacket. He looked out over Devil's Den, which you can see from Little Round Top, a moment, and then turned back to the guy who was gone. And a girl behind him asked him, did you see that? So it was two people that saw it. That's so freaky. And they're not even in the same group. Right. Which, again, is crazy. I just think a lot of places can have these overall more generic, I call them generic hauntings of spirit orbs and footsteps and stuff. But these are people really seeing full body apparitions and interacting with them. Yeah. And as someone that loves the paranormal and paranormal investigations, I'm jealous of it. I can't imagine. Imagine if someone hands you a real authentic musket ball. Imagine someone saying rough one today. Hot, isn't it? That's so cool. It is. It is. I think it's just, I don't know. It's, it's almost like, I guess maybe not comforting in the sense of we are on a battlefield in this particular instance, but I do think the idea that full body apparitions are kind of like, like sentient. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost like familiar. I think sometimes when spirits show themselves in ways that aren't familiar to us it can be for like the knocking i can't do the knocking you know that's just that's not a thing i'm really comfortable with or even ghost orbs it's like oh okay like this is a presence if you can like fully show that it's a ghost orb but having someone sit next to you and like try to have a conversation with you Mm -hmm. it is very familiar and i think that makes it almost like more comforting yeah in my opinion right because you're like oh you know we're separated but by a very thin veil. Right. And it's kind of like you're giving me so much insight to your life and sharing your experience. Like saying hot one, isn't it? It probably was on July 2nd. Yes. Very hot. Yes. It's, it's just so cool to me that, like you said, the veil is thin. It's really a mixture of their timeline and ours. And it's cool to me. Yeah. Agreed. Something interesting to me is that the spirits aren't just revealing themselves to one person. Because, again, George Washington, the whole company saw it multiple times. These people that are talking, multiple different accounts. Because the person that said rough one today, A boys, could have been the same one that said hot, isn't it? So it's multiple occurrences and multiple people each occurrence. So it's really, really interesting to me. Yes. Again, it just gives it a lot of credence, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's almost like, you know, sometimes we see spirits who sort of know that they're spirits and we can tell based on their actions that they're kind of trying to manipulate our world knowing that they're a spirit yeah. and in this case it just kind of seems like even if they know they're spirits they're just hanging out yeah you know yeah they're they're just here and it's not surprising to me because such a tragic mass loss it's not surprising yes. that they're stuck there but something interesting to me that i was thinking about if it's not the same spirit that is like talking to people or tugging on clothing, I wonder if they can interact with each other. And I wonder if they're on the same side of the war because there was 130 Union and 280 Confederate. So that could produce a lot of spirits. So what if like we're sitting there 
and on this side a union spirit comes up and on this side a confederate spirit comes up you know like yeah can they interact with each other it's interesting to me or are they kind of in silo right and how do they i mean that's a really good question because if they are on opposite sides what happens right do they have additional conflict they can't die again right yeah so i was thinking about that it, i think you'll only really find that at battlefields where there's two such strongly opposing sides especially yes. with something like the civil war this was so so significant to them and it was their everything yes you know especially in pennsylvania i mean we're not that far south but it's like we were kind of close to some of the lines people are fighting for their homes and for their families and stuff so yes yeah it makes sense that people feel strongly enough to still be there so i would love to go back to gettysburg with our investigation equipment now that we have our rem pods our emf readers our spirit box our thermometers etc i would love to go back what about you oh yeah oh yeah well a i i I've said this, I think, a few times, but, like, I went when I was young. My dad was really into this stuff, and so we went, I think, a few times. But I was, like, maybe 8 and maybe, like, 12, I think. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as a kid, it is really interesting. I know I was paying attention, but I don't remember, really, like, what was going on or my experiences. Whereas now, you know, like, I remember everything that we do and, right. and more of the history. And, like, it gives me more time to appreciate it because... You yeah, know, a lot of tragedy happened in Gettysburg. I think it's important to like keep that in mind as you're going through. But as a kid, it's kind of impossible. You just can't wrap your head around it. Right. I think so too. I think there's so much in Gettysburg that you can really spend probably a week there going yes. to all of the different historical sites. And we don't live that far. And it's something that I feel like, you know, people talk about Philly all the time. But what about Gettysburg? There's arguably more stuff to see there okay maybe not but arguably yeah. similarly amounted stuff to see there and there it would just be so cool to go back and it's so paranormally active there i would love to go back we should we should take a road trip sween looking at you <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right. Well, with that, yeah, we're going to wrap up this week's episode of Paranormal in Pennsylvania. Thanks for following us into Little Round Top and tune in next Thursday to see what place we discuss next.